In this video, we're going to look at how to compute the average value of a function, as well as the mean value theorem for integrals. So just to recap what an average is, if you're trying to find the mean or an average value of n numbers, you take their sum and you divide by n, however many numbers there are. So similarly, if you have a function f of x on some interval from a to b, then the average value of the function is you take the integral from a to b of f of x, that's almost equivalent to summing up those um, discrete numbers, and then you divide by the length of the interval, 1 over b minus a, which is similar to dividing by how many there are. Okay, so find the average value of f of x equals sine of 4x on the interval from negative pi to pi. So we're just gonna directly apply the formula f average, make sure you write that subscript, is equal to 1 over b minus a is going to be pi minus negative pi. And then the limits of integration are also going to match negative pi to pi. And we're integrating sine of 4x dx. Okay, so here we're going to have 1 over 2 pi times... Well, let's go ahead and anti-differentiate. So antiderivative of sine 4x is going to be a negative cosine 4x, and I have to divide by 4 in order to undo the chain rule, right? You could do a u substitution, but if it's just a constant, divide by that constant. So I have negative 1 fourth cosine 4x evaluated from negative pi to pi. And then I can group these coefficients together. So I have negative 1 over 8 pi times cosine of 4x evaluated from negative pi to pi. So I have negative 1 over 8 pi now times cosine of 4 pi minus cosine of negative 4 pi. So that's going to be negative 1 over 8 pi. Cosine of 4 pi is 1 minus cosine of negative 4 pi is also 1. Remember, cosine is even. So this is negative 1 over 8 pi times 0, which is just 0. So that means the average value of our function on this interval is just 0. Does that make sense? Well, let's graph it just to confirm for ourselves. The problem didn't ask us to, but it's good. And you might have noticed that it was going to be 0 anyways, because sine is an odd function, right? And sine of 4x is still going to be an odd function. So it's symmetric about the origin. And this interval was evenly split from negative pi to pi. So it would make sense for it to come out to be 0. So here's negative pi over 2. Here's negative pi. So here's our interval. And I'm going to graph y equals sine 4x. So the period here is equal to 2 pi divided by 4, which is pi over 2. The amplitude is still 1. So I'm going to cut this into four pieces, right? Because our period is pi over 2. So we're going to have four periods, four cycles represented here on the graph. So sine starts at the origin, then it goes up to 1, back to 0, down to negative 1, back to 0, etc. So there's two periods right there. Okay, and then the other way, down, back to 0, up, back to 0, keep going. And then look at the graph. Does it make sense that the average value, the average function value, the average height is equal to zero? Well, we have symmetry about the origin. So we have just as many values above the x-axis as below the x-axis. And so everything basically cancels each other out. Or if you look at the integral, right, that we computed here from negative pi to pi, of sine of 4x, of course that's going to be 0 because you have just as much positive and negative area, so those all cancel each other out. So visually we can confirm our answers as well. All right, good. Let's look at another example. Here we have find the average value of f of theta 
which equals secant squared theta over two on the interval from zero to pi halves. So F average is equal to one over B minus A. So that's gonna be pi over two minus zero times the integral from zero to pi over two of the function. So secant squared theta over two D theta. Okay, so one over pi over two, that's two over pi times, well, let's just go ahead and anti-differentiate here. So antiderivative of secant squared is gonna be tangent, but then since I have theta over two as my argument, I have to multiply by two, right? Same as dividing by a half. Just think you have to undo the chain rule if you were to take the derivative of tangent of theta over two. And then we're gonna evaluate this from zero to pi halves. So now I'm left with four over pi times, let's evaluate this. So we're gonna have tangent of pi over two over two, so that's pi over four, minus tangent of zero, which equals four over pi times tangent of pi over four is one, tangent of zero is zero, so this is four over pi. All right, very nice. Now let's move on to the mean value theorem for integrals. So the mean value theorem for integrals states the following. As long as our function is continuous on the closed interval from A to B, so you have to make sure that it is continuous on the closed interval, um, then we can find some number C that is an element of that interval such that f of C, which equals the average value of the function, um, which equals one over B minus A times the integral from A to B of f of x dx, or you could think of it that we can find some c such that f of c times b minus a, so multiplying this over to this side, now I have this version of the formula for the mean value theorem for integral. So f of c times b minus a is equal to the integral from a to b of f of x dx. And when you see what this um, theorem represents graphically, it makes a lot more sense. So look here, um, the left-hand side gives us the area of a rectangle. It's giving us the height and the base, and it's the area of this rectangle right here. This is the area of the rectangle shown here. How would you compute the area of the rectangle? Well, we all know the formula for area of a rectangle is base times height. What's the base of this rectangle? Well, it's the distance from A to B, which would be B minus A, times its height, which is F of C. We'll talk about what f of c is in a hot second. This is f of c right here. Okay, now f of c is the average value of our function. And we're saying that we can find some c on the interval such that the average value times the length of the interval is equal to the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx. So what is that in the graph? That's that blue shaded area right? The integral is the blue area. So the mean value theorem for integrals basically tells us if your function's continuous and you compute the area underneath the curve on some interval, I can find a rectangle that has the same exact area on that interval as well. Okay? It is pretty exciting stuff. So, Visually, it should make sense, right? The rectangle and the function have the same area underneath the curve. And then now we're gonna do an example so you can see exactly how it all comes together. So here we go. Um, example is f of x is equal to the square root of x. And we're gonna consider the interval from zero to four. So first things first, find the average value of f on the interval from zero to four. All right, no problem. So f average equals one over four minus zero, b minus a, times the integral from zero to four of rad x dx. So this is gonna be one fourth times the integral from zero to four. This is gonna be x to the one half dx, right? Okay, so if I anti-differentiate now, I'm gonna have x to the three halves, which means I have to divide by three halves or multiply by two thirds, x to the three halves. And then we're gonna evaluate this from zero to four. So one-fourth times two-thirds, that's going to give me one-sixth 
times 4 to the 3 halves minus 0 to the 3 halves is 0. Now 4 to the 3 halves, you take the square root, you take the denominator root into that number, and then you cube it. So you can take 2 and then cube that, which is 8. 8 over 6 reduces to 4 thirds. So that's the average value of f on the interval. Okay, part b asks us to find c such that f average equals f of c. So I need to find the value between 0 and 4 that will give me a function value of 4 thirds. So what you say is, all right, I need to find some f of c that equals f average, which is 4 thirds. Well, what was my function? It was square root of x. So f of c is square root of c. Make sure you write c and not x equals 4 thirds, which means c would be equal to, square both sides, 16 over 9. That's our input. Okay, and then part c says, sketch the graph of f and a rectangle whose area is the same as the area under the graph of f. So this is the part where we're really going to illustrate that mean value theorem for integrals. So I'm going to sketch the graph for f. I mean, it's just rad x, and it's from... 0 to 4, so that's not too bad. I'm just going to scale the y-axis up to 2 then in that case. And x-axis is going to go out to 4. So this is 1, this is 2, this is 4, 2, 3, 1. Okay. So let's start with f of x, rad x. So it's going to go through 0, 0, 1, 1, and 4, 2. And let me add in a little bit more. <clears throat> At 2, it's going to be 1.4. At 3, it'll be 1.7. But this is good enough for now. Okay, so there's rad x. There's f of x equals rad x. And I just need the area underneath the curve from 0 to 4. And then in part a, we got that the average value of our function was 4 thirds. Okay, so 4 thirds is 1 and a third, just to help us graph. So what I'm going to do is take one and a third or four thirds and draw a horizontal line on this interval because that's going to be the height of my rectangle. So four thirds, that looks like it's about right there. So I'm going to draw horizontal line across, that's F average. And then this rectangle here has the same area as the entire blue shaded area. Okay. Beautiful. And then right here is specifically where C is, C is 16 ninths. You know what? That should have been smaller than 2 because 16 over 9 is smaller than 2. This is why sometimes graph paper is more helpful. So we'll just say 2 is here. Okay. And there is 16 ninths. Remember that we solved for in part B. Okay, so the blue shaded area is the integral from 0 to 4 of rad x dx, and then the purple shaded area is your f of c times b minus a. So that's your four thirds times four minus zero. Okay, so that concludes the lesson. Make sure that you practice and apply that theorem properly.